For this particular video, we will be talking about something known as the formation of a dipeptide. Now, a dipeptide is just basically what happens when you have two amino acids linked together through a process known as condensation. We've studied condensation before in the previous videos. Condensation just basically means the removal of a water molecule. And after condensation has happened, the two amino acids will be linked together by a peptide bond, which I've actually linked in a red color line. You can see it over there. And that is known as a dipeptide. So by definition, a dipeptide is just basically two amino acids linked together by a peptide bond, which is also incidentally a covalent bond. Now, one of the most important things to know over here is the peptide bond must be formed between the carboxylic acid group of one amino acid and the amine group of the other amino acid. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. Let's, for example, say I draw out a glycine, which is a type of amino acid. And if you remember, I told you before in uh, the previous video that glycine is the smallest amino acid. Always remember, an amino acid is made out of three important groups. They have the amine group, which I've highlighted in green on the left side, the R group, which I've highlighted in like a, I don't know, a purple color, and the carboxylic acid group, which I've highlighted in yellow, COOH. And on the right side, I've drawn out an alanine, and the alanine has a different R group from glycine. Again, you don't have to memorize the R groups, by the way. So, just to repeat it again, the peptide bond will always form between the COOH group of one amino acid and the NH2 group of another amino acid. And I've highlighted, uh, kind of put two stars over there. So for the two amino acids to be linked to each other, the condensation reaction must happen between those two groups. What if I were to invert, uh, if I were to put alanine on the left side and glycine on the right side? Are they still able to form peptide bonds? Yeah, definitely. Because they will still be able to form the peptide bonds between the carboxylic acid group of alanine and the amine group of glycine. So if we were to just basically draw out a um, chemical reaction over here, as you can see, alanine and glycine are going to be linked together. They're going to be forming a peptide bond. And condensation just basically means the removal of water. Now, to zoom in, as you can see, when I've zoomed in, in the alanine, an OH group comes out from the carboxylic acid group. An OH comes out from the carboxylic acid group. And a hydrogen comes out from the amine group of the other amino acid. So you might want to replay this a bit slowly. And when the OH group and H group comes out from those two amino acids, they become water. That's where the water comes from. By the way, if you hear a kind of sound in the background, uh, they are cutting grass just outside my house. So I can't, I can't tell them to, you know, keep quiet. <laughs> so sorry about that. It may seem a bit annoying. Now, when, you, uh, when the water molecule has actually come out, they will then form a peptide bond. And the peptide bond is between C double bond O and also the NH group. And that is known as the peptide bond. So if you notice, the peptide bond actually consists the peptide bond actually consists of um, four atoms. It consists of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. The whole thing is referred to as a peptide bond. And this is known as a dipeptide. Because it is made up of two amino acids linked together by a peptide bond. Now, let me draw out another amino acid, which is known as aspartic acid, and in bracket, it's just shortened into ASP. And aspartic acid, okay, and then I'm going to draw another acid known as glutamine, in bracket, GLN. Now, if you notice, aspartic acid and glutamine, they have the same carboxylic acid group, they have the same amine group, and their R groups are different. Now, notice the R groups, by the way. In the edge of aspartic acid, there is also a COOH. 
And at the edge of the glutamine, the R group at the top, there's also an NH2 group over there. I just want you to just kind of pay attention to that as well. Now, some questions in multiple choice question paper one can ask you, where can peptide bonds form? You see, the ones we have just basically circle, the carboxylic acid group and the amine group, can peptide bonds form over there? The answer is yes. Peptide bonds will be able to form over there for the very simple reason that peptide bonds will always form between the COOH group of one amino acid and the NH2 group of another amino acid. COOH meaning carboxylic acid group and NH2 meaning the amine group. If I were to circle another carboxylic acid group and another amine group and they form peptide bonds together, yes, they can also form peptide bonds together for the very same reason. However, this is where we have to focus. What if I circle the carboxylic acid group on the left and the R group on the right, even though the R group has an NH2, can they form a condensation reaction? Can they form peptide bonds? The answer is no. The very simple reason is because that NH2 that I've circled in glutamine is part of the R group. And the R group is never involved in the formation of peptide bonds at all. And of course, what if I were to just basically circle the COOH on aspartic acid and the amine group on glutamine? Can they form peptide bonds with each other? Again, no, they are not able to form peptide bonds with each other. What if I were to just circle COOH on the aspartic acid and the NH2 on glutamine, they will also not be able to form peptide bonds with each other because they are part of the R group and the R group is never involved in the formation of a peptide bond. That is a very important distinction that we have to know for the exam. And of course, last but not least, what is a polypeptide chain? What I've drawn over here is I've drawn out one, two, three, four, five, five amino acids. We can see those amino acids where I've highlighted the green color as their amine group, CO, the yellow color as the carboxylic acid group, and like, I, I think that's purple or it's gray. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, the R groups, okay. I'm not going to go into the detail of the R groups. But let's just say, for example, the first amino acid is glycine, the second amino acid is alanine, the third one is glutamine, aspartic acid, and arginine. That's a, just a different amino acid. Now, by we can link all of them together through a process known as condensation reaction, and they will all form peptide bonds with each other. And the peptide bonds are basically represented as the red color line. And as we can see here, when the five amino acids are linked together, this is known as a chain. It does look like a chain, doesn't it? And we call this a polypeptide chain. Peptide meaning amino acid, poly meaning many. So many amino acids linked together by peptide bonds to form a chain. That's basically what a polypeptide chain is. Uh, you may want to ask the question, how long can a polypeptide chain go? Um, well, there are infinite possibilities. Some polypeptide chains can be as short as four. Some polypeptide chains can be as long as 250 amino acids. So the possibilities are limitless when it comes to this. It really depends on uh, our genes, and that will be in chapter six, by the way.